Good afternoon. Uh, today we will learn more about the return-oriented program with challenge examples. Uh, before starting uh, today's material, uh, let's recap about how return-oriented program works in a 64-bit machine as an example. For instance, suppose we have the following uh, stack configuration. Then uh, it will start with the pop RDI and return. So it will pop uh, RDI as a uh, 50,001 yeah, and then return. So pop return, so return to here. And then the next instruction is uh, pop RSI and then 15 and then return. So pop RSI as a 50,001 and then R15 is a sum of the value, we don't care. And then return to set ID. Yeah. So it will call set ID with the arguments that we set uh, from these two snippets of the uh, ROP gadgets, then like the, we can set the RDI, RSI as a 50,001, both of them. So we set two arguments and then call it. Okay. And then uh, to call the exact V uh, function, uh, then we need to set the first argument as a uh, RDI as an address of the sum of the string, then RSI as a zero and R15 as a something else. And RDX is in zero, and then call exec VE. Then it will call exec VE string zero zero. So basically, with wrap and then chaining uh, these kind of the blocks, then we can call any functions uh, with the any number of arguments. So in 32-bit mode, uh, you can call a function by passing arguments via stack. So as long as you can find the address for the function and then address for the instructions that has like the n number of pops and then return for the argument number, then you can call, for example, a function with the three arguments and then you call you return to the pop 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 return, then it will call the function again if this entire part is uh, chained again and again. Then, like the uh, so after calling this function, this instruction will pop all the arguments, and then like call the uh, on the next chain. So in 32-bit mode, you can uh, chain the blocks like this uh, to call multiple functions uh, with using wrap chain. And in 64-bit mode, uh, the the order is a little different. So in 32-bit, we call the function first, and then the clear the argument. But in 64-bit, we set the argument first, and then call the function. So the, uh, we will set the first, second, third, and fourth, and all the arguments like this. And then at the end, we will call the function, and then it will return to the next chain. So uh, we can also chain like the, these kind of the uh, stack configuration again and again for many times for calling multiple functions. So this means uh, if we can express a program as a number of uh, making function calls, then with the return-oriented program, we can actually call the function. For example, for this one, we can call it with the, this stack in 32-bit, and then this uh, stack with the 64-bit, and then do the same thing for the all these functions. Uh, so uh, by chaining them, we can write a program actually. Yeah. So if you want to run set regid and exec v, then, then we can just uh, uh, concatenate these two strings and then put it on the stack. Then it will run this function and then that function. So we can write a program uh, using this kind of the stack configuration. So the rest of the ROP challenges are to learn about the, this kind of the uh, programming capability of the ROP by writing uh, various exploits. And uh, in the wrap one challenge, so that one was easy because uh, what you need to do is like the, just to directly run the set ID and then like the uh, exact VE uh, to run the shell. But uh, in wrap two, uh, you are requested to do to making the three function calls, uh, open the flag file, and then read from the flag file, and then write to the console output. So for the flag string, if there's a no flag or flag text in the program, uh, you can reuse any available string in the program. So if you examine the string from the like the section start address, then you can easily find a, a number four as a string, 
at like the 8048028, this address. So you can uh, create the symlink, the flag as a four, and you can open that. And after that, you can call read uh, file descriptor, but the file descriptor will be three because a zero, one, two are reserved by the send out in, send that out, and send out error. Yeah. So the new file open will always be uh, always return the uh, number three for the first one. Uh, and then the second argument for the buffer, uh, you can choose any kind of the read writable area uh, from the VM map. So from the this region, you can choose a uh, 804 a uh, 800 to uh, reserve some of the space for the like the, the program execution. Yeah. And then you can put the same buffer here, but the uh, file descriptor as a one to print out the content of the flag to the console. And then size as a uh, whatever, uh, but the size must be uh, bigger than the flag size. So your stack configuration for the attack would be uh, like the following, uh, calling the open with the, these arguments. Then in 32-bit, uh, you need to call open and then put the arguments like this. And then you need to return pop, 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 and then return to the next chain. And to call the read function, uh, it has a three arguments. So three, the address and size, and then call read and then pop, pop, return. So write has a three arguments too. So write one, so put all three arguments, one, the address and then size, and then return to the pop, 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 return. So it will be keep chaining uh, with the, the ROP chains. So you can, uh, so the ROP2 challenges are just an example of like the, how you can connect uh, uh, three functions in sequence and then like they get the flag uh, by a uh, the calling these functions. And the next challenge, the ROP3 challenge uh, is the challenge that you need to run your shellcode. Uh, but the problem, the problem is that the program is uh, protected with the DEP, data execution prevention, so there is no executable stack or data area. So if you uh, just uh, checking the uh, the target binary program with the pwn checks act, then like you will see that the NX are enabled for both of binary, but uh, both of, both are not uh, written in PIE. So the uh, code and uh, data area of the program is fixed. And also the program has some other restrictions. Uh, these are, uh, it changes the, in the main function, it first changes the, its uh, current working directory to the root directory. So that means that you cannot use a, a relative uh, file name for the, uh, pointing the file. That means like the, because your current directory is a root, uh, you need to write the full path, for example, to point the bin sh. then you need to uh, put the slash bin slash sh or like if you want to put the some of the file in your home directory then you need to put the slash home slash users and your id and then the file name uh, because like the your current directory has been changed to the root of the file system so you cannot execute sh or some other thing that you can create the symlink in your directory so to do that you need to write the uh, full path and another restriction is that uh, it will run set EMV, uh, the path, and then null. So it will overwrite the path environment variable and then erase everything. So like the, some of the tricks that the system SH to figure out like the some of the binary program in the uh, in your like a predefined path directory, that will never work. Yeah. And uh, in the program, another restriction is that there is no address for system or set regid or exactly so. And another thing is like that we don't have executable stack, so we cannot run shellcode. And uh, we cannot also use a symlink. That means like the uh, all the files need to be uh, pointed by the uh, absolute path because the uh, binary program changes its current working directory to the root. But the only availability is like that we can run the mprotect uh, function because we can know the address of the, this one because this address is fixed be, because the uh, program is a non-PIE, not a position independent executable. 
And uh, let's uh, learn a little bit uh, differ for the uh, this mProtect function. And the mProtect is a function that let you can change the memory access permission. Uh, that means uh, you can change the permission of memory from non-executable to executable, uh, which might be uh, uh, interesting to you. So the, uh, right now we don't have a exact VE or a system, so like we need to figure out like the how to execute our code or a shell yeah, out of the this kind of condition. But the only thing we have is like the unprotected system call. Then the, we can call this function to add the executable privilege to the some of the data area, and then we will put our shell code in that data and run it. Then. Uh, what will be the target for our uh, privilege escalation for the memory? So uh, the target could be any non-executable memory that you can write. So as long as you can put your shellcode in, then anywhere would be fine. So we can put our shellcode in the stack, then we need to target the stack address. And if we can uh, put our data in the global variable, then we can target global variable. Then the target could be heap address or like even code address. So we can make the code address writable and then overwrite the code. That's also possible. But uh, so the uh, address could be anywhere. But the important thing is like the uh, uh, you need to know the address that you can put your shell code on. So we will check the this with the example. And then the first important thing is like you need to know uh, where you can put your shellcode and then uh, add the per executable permission to that data and then we will jump to there. And the usage of the protect uh, system call is very simple. So the, it has uh, only three arguments. Uh, so the first argument is a, a target address as a page aligned, which means the last three digits uh, must be zero. So if you have an address 8048800 or 900 something like that, uh, regardless of that, uh, you need to make uh, all three digits as a zero. And then because the, all the size are also page aligned, so you can put the page aligned size. So memory page size is a four kilobyte, uh, which is a 0x1000 in hexadecimal. So you can put multiple of like the 1000 like this. But uh, to make uh, just uh, one page available for the shellcode running, so we will put the size of the four kilobyte here, and then the last argument seven. Seven indicates the full permission because uh, seven in a binary format is a one one one. So that means uh, we uh, set the, all the bits for the read, write, and executable permission. Okay. And then getting back to the vulnerability part of the uh, ROP three challenge, so. This is the input function, and then this is the read function, and then your input first goes to the stack buffer first. So it will overflow the uh, stack of the input function, and then there's a memory copy from the buffer to the global buffer. And then it will copy the entire uh, 1024 bytes. So, uh, so if you supply a shellcode to the as a user input, then it will be put on the stack as well as the global variable, a uh, global buffer gbuff. So what you can do is like the, this program is not PIE, so you can know the address of the uh, global buffer. So you can put your shellcode at the start of the buffer, then it will be put on the global buffer, and then you can call mprotect global buffer address aligned with the uh, page size, and then size, and then permission seven. Then we can jump to there then now, after calling the uh, mProtect, this memory area will turn to turn into the executable, so we can run our shellcode. So the exploit sketch is look like this. So in 32 bit, uh, we can put our shellcode first, and then the uh, then the, we will put the uh, uh, filler up to save the BP. Then, like uh, this information will be put on the stack as well as the uh, global buffer that the mem copy will copy the data from the stack to the global buffer. And then our target function to call is uh, mprotect, and we will call it with the three arguments: uh, global buffer, aligned address, and then size one page, and then permission seven. 
So this will call the uh, mProtect to add the permission uh, of the executable to the uh, global buffer area. And then after calling this function, it will return to the global buffer, so it will run uh, the shellcode. Uh, in 64-bit, the most of the things are the same, but the only changed thing is like the order of the uh, setting the argument. So in 64-bit, we will put our shellcode first, then fill up to RBP, and then set the argument for the mProtect, and then call it, then call our shellcode. So the important thing is like that because uh, our shellcode does not have any executable permission permission at the start, but after we call and protect, we can give the executable privilege to that memory address, and then we can run our shellcode to get the shell. That's the logic in ROP3. And in ROP4 challenge, uh, this is the vulnerable function, and it has a buffer overflow with the large size read here, yeah, 4096. So this is the vulnerable function, and in the main function, uh, the program first changes its current directory to the root, so you cannot use a relative path to point a file, and then it resets the path rel uh, the environment variable uh, to the like the slash bin and the slash user bin, so we cannot play with the path environment variable trick. And there are some other uh, restrictions, so it does not have executable stack, so we cannot use shellcode. Uh, it does not have system, set regio ID, exec VE, and it does not even have mProtect, so we cannot uh, we cannot invoke the, uh, we cannot uh, add the privilege to the, our shellcode and then running it. And the, what we have is just a read, printf, change directory, puts, open, set EMB, string copy, these functions and uh, with the challenge is that uh, with the, these kind of the function calls can we run open read and print app combo as we did in like the DEP3 and then maybe similar in the ROB2 challenge but the difference is that uh, this path name so open read and print app, open read write these are all same with the dp3 and rob2 so this might be easy but the problem is that the, the path name because uh, our program changed the, its current working directory as a root and to point any kind of flag or like a symlink to that uh, you created in your uh, subdirectory or something then we need to write the full uh, absolute path at here yeah. yeah so you need to build a slash home slash labs slash week five something yeah this kind of the long string and then like the uh, I'm sure that the, like the, there is no program that like it will internally uh, store all these kind of the data uh, as a string literal yeah then can we solve this challenge so we need to put like the, this kind of the string and then can we generate the, this kind of a path, arbitrary path string and then we can open and read and print it as a console output. Uh, we can do that and we can do that by using string copy function. Yeah. And because a Rob can program any program uh, in Turing complete matter, uh, you can build a string using Rob as a program and to do that, we will use a string copy function. And the method is that uh, we have seen like these kind of the string literals and like the, uh, that it has all the small case, uh, uh, small case characters. So this one string contains all, uh, from all the characters from A to Z and then some of the numbers and dash. And then the, in the program, you can find the, some of the slashes in there. Yeah. So by using these strings and then string copy function uh, you can build arbitrary string using rub chain in a similar fashion to like the, this kind of thing so simply like the, we will borrow some of the character for example if we need to type l then borrow this character to put l here and then i then borrow this character to put i at here something like that yeah and Let's take a look at the, uh, how we can build a string. And uh, let's set the target first. 
So from the VM map, uh, we can use our favorite address 8048800, which is a readable and writable area. Yeah, and we can use this as a string variable address. And then we will use the string copy function uh, to build a string. So our destination address would be the string address uh, in the like the, the writable area. Yeah, and then if we put the source address as the address of the, the string. Then we can call string copy destination address, and then source address. Then result will be like the, it will copy the entire string. Yeah. But the, this is not our purpose. But the, to build an arbitrary string, for instance, suppose you need to build a string sh, s and h in the at the like this address. Then what we can do is we can set the destination address as the string address our target address, and then the source address, instead of the start of the, like, uh, putting the start of the, this address, uh, can we put the uh, start address plus 24? Because 24th position from here to, uh, from in this string is at exactly at this position. So in that case, it will not copy the entire string. So it will copy starting from S over lazy uh, the lazy dog, uh, this data to our target address. So it will at least put the first character S on the target address. So we will ignore the rest of the things because we can change the followings later. So at least we can put uh, first character S by borrowing the S character from here. And then next is putting the H. So we will run the, the string copy again to the target address plus one because we will overwrite the next character h to uh, and then put h on there, and then we can uh, put the uh, source address as the position of the h in the any kind of string. Then it will copy the h e e quick brown fox jumps etc. We will put this address. Then it will copy the entire string. Uh, to the variable, so the result will be uh, the first character S will be there, and then she quick brown uh, fox jumps over the lazy dog. That will be the result. So at least we have a S and H here, and then the, right now we have uh, uh, some of the uh, some of the data in the tail, but we can also terminate the string uh, by uh, putting a end of the string uh, to, as a string copy. So for example, so now we put the S and H, and then we can put the destination address as uh, the address plus two, the right next character the, of the H, and then we can point the end of the any kind of string as a null string. So this is the uh, string uh, with the size 44, and then if we put the 44th position uh, in the string, then it will put the null byte uh, to mark the termination of the string. And then this is also like the length of zero string in the definition of the string compare and copy in C library. So if we call a string copy to the target address plus two and then null string, then it will terminate the string. So we can actually add the terminating byte at here so we can build the string sh. So the task for Rob4 is that uh, you can build any kind of the arbitrary string uh, in the global variable area. So that will be 804a something or like a 601 something in the like the 64-bit uh, machine. And uh, you can find uh, those are write readable and writable area and fixed address in the VM app on the GDB. So please please find uh, those areas from the in the binary. And then please. Uh, build uh, these two strings uh, to open the flag. And then you can call uh, three uh, functions, open the flag file after building the string, and then read the flag file, read from the flag file, and then print the content uh, out to the console. That's it. So these are the second part of the uh, challenges in week five. Uh, so all the challenges are in the VMCTF2 machines. Uh, so uh, please let me know if you cannot access on the machine and also uh, uh, we will have the third part of the uh, week 5 lecture on Thursday so you will have enough time to finish all the challenges by the uh, due on the next Thursday.